Please take your seats quickly, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Hi guys, welcome to OneMinuteTennis.com. In today's session, I want to talk to you about a very simple technique that will allow you to have way more precision and way more consistency in both your forehand and backhand. Now, most recreational players, probably you, when you take the racket back, the right hand is far too dominant. You see, the right hand wants to be the dominant hand when swinging up to the ball. But when swinging away from the ball, the left hand must be the driver. It must be the controlling force of the take back. Otherwise, we get a paradox because the faster that you need to take the racket back, the larger the take back is, just the opposite of what we really want. Let me show you what I mean. I go into my ready position here and I take the racket back slowly, but I'm going to take it back with the right hand and the left hand being a passenger just following. And I might naturally move to here. But now if I make the same movement very, very quickly, and now I'm further back. The same on the backhand, if the left hand is just a passenger and the right hand is the driver, then now I go slowly and I'll go into this position. But if I speed the movement up, then I'm making a bigger swing. But I want to have smaller swings when the ball is very fast and I'm under time pressure and I need to control the ball, but I don't have to worry about speed because I'm going to borrow the speed of the ball. Or I want a larger swing when the ball is a little bit slower and I have to generate my own force. So there's kind of a paradox here and it's a very unfortunate paradox. And there's another problem on the backhand side because we're really fighting our own momentum when we go back and then change direction and go forwards. If you imagine driving your car and throwing it in reverse and then hammering it into drive, then the engine's going to explode. Now on the forehand, we're strong enough to handle that. But on the backhand side, if the right hand is dominant taking the racket back, then you have this snappy sort of lag here that really results in the wrist going out of control and a loss of power and a very uncomfortable feeling on contact. If you find you have to slice when facing very fast balls, that's almost certainly what's happening. So we need to make sure that the left hand is the driver. You see, if I now have the left hand on the bridge of the racket and I go to here, then whether it's slow, or whether it's fast, then I'm going to be in the same position. On the backhand here, again, the left hand is now dominant. I'm going to have the right hand as the passenger and the left hand takes the racket to here, whether it's fast or whether it's slow. But you probably already know this and yet it still keeps happening because it's very difficult to apply such detail when you're in a match or under pressure or when the ball's flying towards you. But a great way of getting around this is using something that's called bilateral symmetry. And the human being is better at this than any other animal in the world. If the two hands are set in the same manner at the beginning, then they naturally will move together in harmony. Um, so as an example, if I take a piece of paper and I simply screw up the piece of paper, I'm going to use both my hands and I don't think about it, but the hands were in harmony and they actually mirrored each other's movements. And it's the same with the take back in tennis. If we set the hands up the same, then we won't have one hand being more dominant than another. They'll actually move back in harmony. And this problem of having larger backswings and smaller backswings will disappear. So to set them up together, instead of having the hand on the bridge of the racket here, if you raise your finger onto the string of the racket and then take the racket back, then automatically both hands will naturally stay on the racket and then the swings will be the same size, no matter what stress or speed or situation you're in on the court. So I'm now in this position here and I think about nothing else and I take the racket back and naturally the left hand was leading the racket and the right hand was the passenger. In this position, naturally the right hand became tight and the left hand was the passenger. On the forehand side here, holding it here, naturally there is a split of the left hand and the racket very early. But when I bring my hand here, then naturally they stay together. The reason it works is very simple. The left hand and the right hand are now mirroring each other at the beginning of the stroke with the forefingers raised on both hands. And this is close enough for you to naturally have this movement where both hands are actually going to move symmetrically. When you apply this to your game, then you get much more consistency because you're actually beginning the stroke from the same position every single time. 
So use bilateral symmetry. It's how the human body is designed. Raise this finger and then see how your ground strokes become more consistent and more precise because you have the perfect starting place every single time. If you like my ideas on tennis, have a look at our books on Amazon. We provide very detailed scientific breakdowns of what's actually happening in the strokes and then really simple practical solutions with illustrations on how you can apply change to your game. Or for a more personalized service, have a look at what we're doing with online coaching. I'm helping players in over 30 countries all over the world. It's a unique service of one-to-one -one personalized training. For more information, email me or check out the website. So use bilateral symmetry in your game. Make sure that the two hands are working in harmony together and not fighting and resisting each other. And you'll find you have more consistency, more precision and better ground strokes today. Thanks for watching. See you next time for more unique tennis lessons that really work.